Hey everybody, Sean from Movie Assault here, and it's time once again for another movie review. This time out, I am reviewing Terrifier 2 from 2022. It's actually out in theaters right now and doing quite well, thank you. Um, as I do this review, this movie is currently booked in about 700 theaters, I think, and they're planning to add 300 more or so this Halloween weekend because the movie is actually doing gangbusters at the box office. For a movie that was made for $250,000, it's doing phenomenally well. Uh, it's already made over $5 million. And uh, hopefully with the addition of more theaters, it'll make even more. Um, to say this movie has been a massive success is, is kind of an understatement, but uh, especially in light of the fact that it really hasn't had much of a push promotionally, uh, at least in the conventional way. A lot of press has been given to it because supposedly people have been throwing up and fainting and ambulances have needed to be called to certain theaters or, or, or so is, is so the news is saying. I I can't confirm any of that, obviously, uh, but uh, uh, if, if that's out there in the mainstream reporting, then definitely people are going to want to see what all the fuss is about. So I, I assume that this movie is going to make a lot of money this weekend. Whether or not anybody likes it uh, or reviews it, but I liked it. I liked it a lot. And I'm going to tell you right now that if you don't want to spoil anything, I'm not going to spoil the movie or any big plot points or anything, but uh, if you don't want to know anything about the movie and you're the slightest bit interested in it, just go see it. It's really good. It, if you like slasher movies, if you like splatter movies, if you like gratuitously violent movies featuring a slasher villain, uh, you'll enjoy this movie. If you have the least bit of hesitancy in seeing an over-the-top, gory, violent horror movie, just don't go see it. And there you go. That's that's my review. End of story. <laughs> uh, but for those of you who want to know a little bit of detail on what I liked about it, um, keep watching. Uh, this, of course, is a sequel to 2016's Terrifier, which was written and directed by Damien Leone. Uh, this one is as well. Also, he is responsible for the editing and makeup effects and um, a lot of other things. He's, this is kind of a kind of a one man show, which is not entirely true because there is a, a bunch of people that has helped have helped him with this film. But he gets most of the credit because he is the writer, the director and the editor and uh, does some of the special effects. This is his baby, as they say. Uh, so if you've seen the original Terrifier, you know the original Terrifier. It dealt with Art the Clown, who is sort of a sadistic, menacing, murdering clown who doesn't seem to know when to quit hitting or stabbing or breaking somebody uh, when he's killed them. He is also, he's played by David Howard Thornton, uh, who gives just a phenomenal performance in the original Terrifier and even more so in this uh, movie. He's just, he's literally hilarious. I mean, he's he never says a word, but you always know what he's he's thinking or feeling or planning. Uh, his facial expressions are just phenomenal. Uh, his hand gestures, his reactions to things. He, it's it it's a genius performance and um, in light of the fact that he's a clown and he's capable of doing such horrible things the fact that he's so funny makes him extra creepy and I think Terrifier 2 has sort of elevated him to that iconic slasher status uh, that has also been heaped upon Michael Myers, Jason Voorhees, Freddy Krueger. I think Art the Clown definitely mainly because of the performance of David Howard Thornton. He belongs in being mentioned in the same breath with those characters. Um, but this time around in Terrifier 2, there's a little bit of a story going behind it. Uh, the first movie, there really wasn't much of a story. It was just sort of an excuse for Art the Clown to kind of go haywire on a few people. Uh, the events of the first film are now referred to as the Miles County Massacre. And... We have two siblings, a, um, a girl named Sienna and a boy named Jonathan, brother and sister, who 
discover they have sort of a supernatural, possibly supernatural connection with Art the Clown as a result of their father who has passed away. He committed suicide, uh, I believe, also a year ago. I'm not 100% sure on the date of when the, the father committed suicide, but his, the father did commit suicide. And there is some sort of connection between Art the Clown and Sienna and Jonathan. Uh, Sienna is played by Lauren Lavera, and Jonathan is played by Elliot Fulham. Both give really good performances, but it is uh, Lauren Lavera who, who does a really good job as Sienna, um, not taking anything away from David Howard Thornton's performance in this film, but she is also very uh, worthy of mentioning uh, her performance as well. She's very good. Um, usually the acting in slasher films isn't 100% great. Uh, the acting in this is far better than I would expect it to be, especially for a low-budget film like this. But like I said, Damien Leone has gotten a lot of uh, bang for his buck everywhere in this movie. It looks great. It sounds great. Uh, and there is a lot of it. It is two hours and 18 minutes long. It may have needed a little bit of a trim here and there, mostly in, unbelievably for a slasher film, uh, extraneous character development is probably where I would have done the most trimming, uh, but not the ultra-violence. And if you've heard those reports about ambulances and people fainting and vomiting and whatnot, uh, I don't know if that's true, but it is possible because this is one of the most violent, gross, gory slasher films I've ever seen. Uh, but in the context of the character of Art the Clown, it kind of makes sense because he's so crazy and over the top. Um, so really all I have to say about this movie is that if you're a slasher fan and you're looking for a pure slasher with elements sort of from the 80s, sort of the throwbacks uh, to an era where, you know, the slasher film was a little more prevalent and um, it doesn't have a lot of the same tropes as the 80s, I think you'll really enjoy Terrifier 2. It's not for the faint of heart. Uh, if you're expecting, you know, the camera to cut away when Art the Clown smashes something into somebody's head, that doesn't happen. If you're expecting the camera to cut away when he continues to smash that person's head into a bloody pulp, that doesn't happen. But if you're a gore hound, you're totally in the right place with this movie. You'll, you'll have a lot of fun. Um, it has, you know, gratuitous violence, over-the-top kills, and a charismatic, oddly charismatic, but uniquely creepy villain. So there really isn't much more to recommend if you're looking for a slasher. And I give Terrifier 2 an 8 out of 10. Go see it, but know what you're getting yourself into. It is not for the faint of heart. So there you go. That's my review of Terrifier 2. As always, thank you for making it to the end of the video. A Hall the Halloween 15 is going to resume uh, with the next movie review that I do, and that will be of The Frighteners from 1996. Thanks again for watching, everybody. Take it easy.